Some of the questions that will be answered during this presentation include what search engines are, why we use search engines, why search engines are evolving, what are search engines evolving to, and what privacy issues could arise from this evolution. So what exactly is a search engine? By my estimation, a search engine is a tool that allows a user to search the web for all kinds of useful information. Text, images, videos, we ask search engines questions and they in return give us the answer to these questions. Just by a show of hands, how many of you have had experience with using Bing, Yahoo, or Google? Look around, everybody has had experience with these things. Um, so it, I, I would say it's safe to say, to conclude that um, most people today have experience with some searching tool, some form, of, some form or another. So why is that? Why is everyone uh, infatuated by search engines? And the answer is obvious. We all use search engines because we all have questions and the answer. And the web is filled with a tremendous amount of useful information just waiting to be queried. Just think about every time you're faced with a simple question that needs, an that needs answering. For example, you want to know who was the 33rd president of the United States. More often than not, you would, you, you would use Google to find that it was Harry Truman. This reliance that has been built between humans and search engines is possibly the main cause of the ongoing evolution of search engines. So what really is causing this evolution? Search engines are evolving because we need them to. As humans begin to ask more and more advanced questions, they begin to realize that search giants, the search giants of today just aren't as effective in answering our questions as we have once thought. One could say that humans are becoming too intelligent for search engines. So how are these search engines ineffective or less effective? They're less effective because we as internet searchers are now asking questions that are extremely extensive and descriptive. That we expect the results from these questions to answer all aspects of the original question. Back when the web was primarily a text-based web, the, or the, the era in which millions and millions of people began utilizing the internet for its search capabilities, roughly between the late, nine, late 1990s to about 2006, the user would ask a question and would become so entranced by all the information presented to him or her. The user would become so excited at the fact that they could rely on something other than a book for fast, somewhat reliable information. I'm going to use an example to further explain what I mean by this. So let's say back when the web was more text-based, I ran a search for heated reclining chairs. And from that search, I would find a blog site all about heated reclining chairs. Uh, from the site, I would get a list of positives and negatives of, of the chairs, some knowledge on what is and what is not a fair price, and a couple of other useful tips. Okay, so you're thinking, what is wrong with the search engine that provides, provides me with so much useful information? And the answer is nothing, unless it is you have questions that are still left unanswered. This requires you to run another search and hope that Google, or whatever search engine you're using, will return the result that you want. And this could require a great amount of tweaking your original question in, in your Google search. And who knows if you'll ever find exactly what you're looking for in the first place. But what if you could get that extra information to better your decision? And this time it could be, treat, be retrieved from a single search. Is that too much to ask our search engine pals? The current users of the internet and the search capabilities want much more from their search engines. For example, now when someone's performing a search for information about heated refined chairs, they probably want comparative pricing of the market's top products, the opinions of their friends and family, a 10-year history of repairs and defects, and what is considered a top-of-the-line model, and where to buy these things. Users of today's internet expect a lot more information because they know what is available. They know what is out there somewhere, and bringing all that together and making it make sense in a way that is easily consumed is a massive interface with structured data task that the search engines of today were just not created to do. So if current search engines are becoming increasingly less and less effective, what will the next generation of search engines bring? And this is where I think it's going to be crazy. <coughs> During my research, I came across several candidates for the future of search engines. However, I'm only going to focus on one of these ideas because I truly believe that this change could happen and may quite possibly be happening now. Okay, take a moment and forget everything that I said about search engines what they are. I need a sense of breakup with Google.
because if you're Eric Schmidt, current CEO of Google, you might not be in a good mood after unless you went on this knowledge. Anyways, get the word engine and replace it with application. Anyone understand, does anyone understand what this is going? It, let me clear it up for you and give you some examples to make everything make sense. So, <coughs> how many of you have heard of the website Expedia.com? When the user utilizes Expedia.com, they will form one heck of a search, bringing together a multitude of variables to determine which flight to take. Yeah. Expedia is essentially a decision support application filled with structured data to be accessed by the user. In other words, Expedia.com is a search application. After using a search application like Expedia, we will go to Google and expect Google to do the same thing for us, but sadly, Google will always fail. Google fails because the data is not as structured as the focus that search app data. Search is mutating into something that sits underneath the interface and powers its functionality. The Google searches as we know it will become the search for the most appropriate focused app to use. This obviously is not going to make Google happy since Steve Jobs, like Apple, chief and tech officer, is the current app king. Uh, although I wonder if search applications had anything to do with Google teaming with Android. I mean, could we possibly be on the brink of a search app or search app or interface war? Okay, so let's review everything that I've gone over so far. The future of search is going to be a search for the best search app to perform a more structured and focused search for the user. I will use another example now to clarify exactly what I mean by this. For example, a parent needs to hire a clown for their son's eight-year-old birthday party, they're, and they're going to use this new search application tool. The tool will find the correct app to, to use and it will automatically download the app. The parent will then open the app and run the search. The search application almost instantaneously pulls all results from Google, Yahoo, and Bing, then pulls all the reviews from Yelp and, and Andy's list, further compares with the complaints field of the search with a better business bureau and Diamond certified, and in the end, gives the parent a structured search result. Just imagine a world where there truly is an app for everything. A world with millions and millions of structured search applications. Okay, now let's make this look a little more futuristic and add something a tad bit more interesting. The future of search will not stop at millions and millions of search applications. There's going to be much more, much more to it than that. The future of search will most certainly be equipped with artificial intelligence, advanced machine learning, and top of the line natural language processing. And definitely count on being cool. It's time to introduce you to the current phone app that could change the search the way we come to know forever. Enter Siri, an iPhone application that uses natural language processing to answer questions, make recommendations, and perform actions by delegating requests to an ever expanding set of web services. Siri is the first iPhone application that is strictly focused on artificial intelligence. This voice activated embedded search tool is the beginning of what could be the age of digital assistance. However, for an assistant to be successful, meaning to meet all the needs of his or her master, we have to know a whole lot about his or her master. Being able to express an intent in a way that's understandable to a machine is the best way to help increase the odds of success. A machine that is fully capable of deciphering all the nuances and ambiguity of the human language would solve a lot of problems in terms of what exactly is to be retrieved by the initial search. <coughs> okay, so let's begin to tie all this together. Now we're going to combine the idea of mobility and a personal assistant that will perform a search for the best data structured app for the user via voice or text entry. Now think about this. Whenever a user uses a search or non-search application, what if there is a way to record all the interactive data between assistant and search app and store it in a data set? Then have your assistant act and make decisions based on that data. This is this is where the artificial intelligence, machine learning, and natural language processing are really all brought into focus. I'll use another futuristic example to explain what I mean. Say that I'm going to travel around Philadelphia for a couple of days, and I'm going to use one of these future search applications, which is the uh, Philadelphia Transit System application, to navigate my way through the city. All the questions back and forth that I'm going to use that app for which ends up being a structured data session. Now match that set against match that set of data against the Philly Transit map. I say, let's go this way, I want to go here, I prefer taking this route. And this becomes a data set. And 
this data set is essentially a data set built to inform other searches that are making decisions that on things that seem unrelated, but not, but, but, un, 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 big decisions on things that are seemingly unrelated, but may not be. Okay, so now the same example. Let's travel in the future four months. I'm once again traveling, but this time to New York, and I once rent a car. I use my assistant to search for the best search application once again. My assistant finds the correct app, then stops abruptly. The, the personal assistant begins to think, wait a second, didn't, didn't this guy use the Philly Transit System application to travel a city a couple months ago, to travel a city a couple months ago? The personal assistant searches through all the metadata that was saved during the visit, as well as any, other, any extra uh, metadata, and responds to the query by saying, hey, you know what, you don't need that rental car. Instead, you can use the New York Transit System application. Here's an app for it, and it'll be instantly downloaded to, to the person's phone. You can, get, you can get to the airport and to wherever else you want to go without having a rental car. And plus, you'll save $150, which it already knows is a goal of yours because you were interacting with the Mint, Mint application. And it said that you and the Mint application in the navigation it said that you wanted to save $200 a month. And this is something that will help you accomplish that goal. So your assistant is essentially making the best decision for you based off the information it knows about you. And here this brings us to the privacy section of the presentation. Quoted from Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. The power the company or corporation will be given to whoever can securely control all of our private information. The idea of a personal assistant requires one assent to surrender a great amount of personal information to aid in decision making. This concept of an intermediary or someone who you trust with the majority of your personal information will be, in, will be in an extremely powerful and profitable position. I really believe that there's going to be a huge debate in the near future about who is going to emerge as the holder of our private information. I believe that Microsoft and Google have a shot at holding this title of the all-knowing intermediary to the world. However, I won't count on Apple. In my personal opinion, if my assistant is helping me make intelligent decisions and I'm engaged in some form of contract, why not engage in the power of technology and personal assistance, especially if you can save me money and time? And why not let a search tool combine your lifestyle on Facebook with how much money you're trying to save in a private banking application? Here is the app. Okay, so everyone, everyone remembers forget search engines, become familiar with the term structured search, search application, as well as Siri, or some artificial intelligent personal assistant that's going to guide us on our searching tasks. That is if we're willing to give up a great amount of personal information. And that concludes my presentation today. Thank you for coming.